it's your favorite YouTuber, Austin Holliman. We are back here in Sao Paulo. We'll be in Sao Paulo for a while. Back with another interview. Did I mention I'm in my favorite country, by the way? I'm in my favorite country. And uh, we have a guest today who, first of all, hit the like button if you have not already. But we have a guest today who's been to Medellin and a few other cities in Colombia and is in many cities in Brazil and actually at many places in South America for what I've seen from following him over the years. And um, he has chosen Brazil to have his soon to be, I'm assuming, wife and uh, his home base as well. So we are going to go ahead and bring him up and we're going to interview him about Medellin because he has more experience there. But he still chose the best place. We all know what the best place is, you guys. So we don't really need to explain more why it's the best place. But let's go ahead and bring him up. What's going on? Yo, what's happening, man? How you doing? Boa tarde, irmão. Muito bom. <laughs> so, tell, so first of all, let's answer the question very uh, well. First of all, tell everybody who you are, what you do, and uh, where you at. So, uh, Rico is uh, me sobrenome. It's uh, just a nickname that I adopted after uh, moving to South America. But uh, governments, Tyshawn Jones. Uh, originally from Jacksonville, Florida, and as Austin mentioned, now living in Rio de Janeiro. And I'm a software developer, uh, which is how I'm able to live and work and travel. Okay, so how long have you been a software developer? Man, uh, started that journey in February of 2013, so a little over 11 years now. Okay, over 11 years. Okay, so is that the best route for men that want to be digital nomad you would say i i absolutely believe so um because most people that are trying to get into it to be able to work remotely most of them are trying to get into security they're trying to get into network engineering um but a lot of those jobs have geo restrictions where they don't really want you working uh, overseas, and I think it's a lot easier to be able to get that situation to work and live abroad as a software engineer. It's just a little harder, which is why people typically stay away. Oh, okay. I see. I see. So, to answer the question short for today, do you think that Brazil is better for Black men or men in general to date as opposed to uh, Colombia? A thousand percent. I don't think uh, I don't think it's close. Why do you say that? I think that, you know, Brazil having the largest black population outside of the continent of Africa bodes very well for you. Right. Because like a lot of my dating experiences in Colombia, um, I've had quite a few girls who say, oh, well, I only date black men exclusively. Most of those women have had some experience with a gringo, you know what I'm saying? He rocked their world and now they just on the black train and that's where they stay. But you also have a lot of um, like, you know, the white Colombians who will say, yo, I don't I don't date black men. You, you see that everywhere. I see that in Brazil as well. But I feel like it's a lot less of a problem here because there are so many black people that are exposed to it. It's, you know what I mean? It's just a better situation as a black man. I could agree. I could agree that uh, it being black is a lot easier to date in Brazil as opposed to many other places in the world, unless if you're in Africa or somewhere like that. So um, my first question for you is, uh, how did the cultural expectations of Brazil influence the dating dynamic? I'm not in Brazil, in Colombia. How did the cultural expectations in Colombia influence the dating dynamics compared to the United States? So one of the big things about Colombian and South American culture in general, but speaking of Colombia, it's they are so family oriented there and there's a serious lack of feminism. So, you know, feminism does exist there, but it is the, the women who subscribe to that school of thought are definitely the minority uh, in that country. So, you know, when I was younger, I remember growing up, you know, 90s, early 2000s, as black people, we had a sense of community. There was a barter and trade system. Hey, I need some eggs. I could trade you for some sugar. There was, you know, we have in a neighborhood barbecue, everybody's invited, everybody from, you know, the neighborhood comes and brings something. You see so much of that still in Colombia with the togetherness. And I think that influences the way that the women treat you. You know what I mean? So. Mm. Mm, I would agree. So you think that uh, Colombia is more 
of a place to build a is it is it more likely that you could build a family in Colombia than Brazil? Uh, you know, I would say it's about equal in that regards because the success that you have in that arena is going to be highly dependent on what type of woman that you choose and, and who you're able to attract. Okay. Okay. So do you think, uh, you think feminism is heavier in Brazil than it is Colombia? No, I, I think it's, it's worse in Colombia. Really? Why do you say that? Um, I think that I see a lot more women who are of this mindset that, you know, I don't really want to have to depend on a man. You know, I would rather, you know, get out here, work, get it on my own. And I don't think it necessarily influences the way that they treat you in a relationship. But that dynamic of just staying home, being a housewife, you, you'll find a lot of Colombian women that are with that motion. But you got to have the money to be able to back it. That mindset is very annoying, man. I have a chick here in Brazil that I've been talking to for two years now. Well, it'll be two years in October or November, November. And, you know, every even just to like pay offer to pay for her flight, like she she takes it as like a form of like she owes me something and she doesn't want to feel like she has to pay me back. And I'm like, the fuck are you talking about? Right. Like it's it's in my it's just natural. I'm not gonna I don't buy chicks out thinking that okay she need I need my my plane money back. I'm not taking you that that feminism stuff can really get annoyed, man. I can't stand it. Cuz it's right. it, honestly if you ask me it makes women get kind of stupid. Like it's it's stuff that it's just stupid, man. It really is. So it, it, man, I it, it, just thinking about it the logic is just so dumb. Well, I, I tell you, I feel like, you know, the first world, Western world, Western countries bred that mentality. But the great day of reckoning is coming sooner than later, because all of this, you know, hey, I'm not going 50 50. I've literally seen women in the state say I would rather be single and pay 100 percent of my bills than go 50 50 with a man. And that's just ass backwards to me. I will never understand that it. it's not logical, but with the economy and the inflation and the way things are going in the states right now, give it five to 10 years, people are not going to be able to afford to live on their own. And you're going to see a lot more women coming back to the table, erasing that mindset, doing the 180 because they don't have a choice. So, And I'm just thinking you got so you don't want to do 50 50 and you want to be single and pay for your own stuff 100 percent. But if man pays for your 100 percent then he's controlling so what options do you have left <laughs> get on a plane i mean so you can't pay because now you're a misogynist she'd rather pay for herself than go half with you so i'm trying to it, don't i mean i guess just don't fuck with men at all right i it's man i'm i'm so glad i, I don't have to deal with it uh, so what were your initial impressions of the, the dating scene in Colombia when you first arrived? Um, so when I first arrived, I didn't, first of all, I moved to a small city called Santa Monica and I lived there for about a year. I lived in Medellin for about four or five months with my then girlfriend at the time. It's no secret. Everybody uh, knows her. You've interviewed her before. Um, and I will say that at first, I kind of had to depend on women who knew a little bit of English, right? That were bilingual because I knew no Spanish, but it forced me to learn. Once I got really good at Spanish and was able to go out on dates where I didn't need a translator and I could really communicate, bro, the rotation was through the roof. You know what I'm saying? Like literally every city from Medellin, Barranquilla, Cartagena, Santa Marta, any of those places, man, that I've lived, I was able to successfully date because I knew Spanish. And a lot of the women wouldn't give me the time of day at first because they think, oh, you're just another gringo weekend warrior coming to smash the girls and go back home. Um, but typically I would exchange Instagrams with them as well as WhatsApp. And once they started to follow me and watch my stories and see, oh, wow, he actually does live here. He's posting here every day. He knows Spanish. Then they will warm up. So I actually took that as a green flag. You know what I mean? That 
you know, a lot of people will say, yo, you know, just get your passport, go overseas. These women are going to love you as if they throw themselves at you just because you're American. I didn't find that to be the case at all. My success came from the work that I had to put it on myself to learn the language, to enjoy the culture. Like I seriously love salsa music, great salsa dancer. Things like that will really open up the door for you. So would you say it's the same thing? And I know the answer, but would you say it's the same thing like that in Rio? Oh, man, without a doubt. Like, yo, if you don't know Portuguese, these women are like deuces. They don't want to deal with you. They they don't even want to talk to you. And I understand because it's laziness. You know what I mean? I know Cats has been coming down here 10, 20 years. I speak more Portuguese than them, and I've only been here a year. You know what I mean? And, and women see that as well. So. Yeah, uh, it's kind of hard to say that you're in Brazil to enjoy the culture and, uh, you know, be a, actually assimilate yourself into the community and you can't even speak. You know, it's just like the, the legal, let's say, Latin Americans that come to America and they can't leave their neighborhood. You know, they're not really in the United States. They're just in their little Mexico or their little Colombia that, with their because they don't speak English. So right. the many... You can't speak to Austin when you see him. Yeah, I mean, now you can. I speak Spanish, so yeah. But before that, no. You know, you can't really assimilate. Americans, for the most part, seems like we only know English. Because uh, when we learn Spanish and Portuguese, like, oh, you know two. Like, that's damn near something to put on your resume to, to write to the president. Like, oh, I speak three languages. You know, as an American, that's a big deal. You know, so. Uh, Bro, that, shit, that shit is on my Instagram bio. Like, yo, I am trying. Because it's a flex when you're American. Yeah. Like, we don't do that shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, we don't, we we don't, we think the world revolves around us, so we only know English for the most part. So, uh, how approachable do you find? I mean, which one do you find more approachable, Colombian women or Brazilian women? Uh, just from I, 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 I think it's about equal. You know what I mean? Like, quite a few of the women that I dated was strictly from cold approach and I would see them on the street. Uh, I remember my guy, Rich, we, we, we had a trip in Santa Marta and we were sitting down at this restaurant, uh, Punto, what is it? Punto Marino, something like that. Rotadero beach in Santa Marta. We sitting there vibing, watching the NBA finals and some chicks walk by on the beach. And I'm like, yo, you see that? He's like, yeah. I'm like, you want to see if they want to come up here and take a shot with us? He's like, bro, you know Spanish. I'll let them. So I asked him, hey, y'all want to come take a shot? Bro, chicks came up there, took a shot with us, spent the next, the rest of the night with us. You know what I mean? One of the girls was like, hey, you like to smoke? I was like, yeah. She was like, well, I got some. Let's go smoke on the beach. I said, I'll do wow. you one thing. I'll, I'll match you. Let's go. And we literally just vibe the whole night like that. And I actually ended up dating this girl for quite a while. Um, she was definitely on the team for a second. So I think I wow. think the approachability is there in any of those countries, because if a woman sees an attractive man the same way as a man, you see an attractive woman, you're going to want to approach him. You're going to want to say something. Um, but I would definitely say, wait to see if you get some choosing signals and, and don't come across as that thirsty guy trying to holler at everything you see. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, I used to strictly rely on choosing signals, but as I got back into my cold approaching habits, I still will approach if I feel like I just have to. But uh, I look for body length because I don't care what nobody says. If a chick is single and she's wanting to mingle, even if she doesn't see you, her body language comes off in a way that makes her available for men to cold approach. Right. Uh, versus, yeah, versus women that aren't looking for that. So uh, where have you you've been to Peru? Uruguay, Argentina, Colombia, Brazil. Where else have you been to in Latin America? Uh, just those places. Yeah, you named them. Brazil, Uruguay, Argentina, Peru, Colombia. Um, and then I did a brief little couple days in Costa Rica, but hated it. But of course, that's Central America. But it's pretty much the depth of my uh, travels outside of the States, other than some Caribbean islands and stuff on cruises. I remember seeing that. So um, would you say that Colombians are the most approachable out of all those places in Latin America you went to? Uh, I would I think so. I, I would definitely say so, because um, I, I remember I was like, OK, these are some examples of how understanding the culture can affect and change your experience. There was one time where I had I took a trip to Mexico. I come back with some Mexican pesos and I'm like, 
what the hell am I going to do with this? I might as well exchange it in the Colombian peso. So I'm walking around looking for an exchange house that can do this transaction. And I'm asking people on the street and I'm getting frustrated because I feel like I'm getting the runaround. Everybody's like, oh, well, try this place or, well, maybe you should try this place over here. And, they, and I'm running around the city all day. Right. And now I'm getting frustrated. Like, why doesn't anybody know where the hell, you know what I'm saying? This place is. It didn't dawn on me until later. You have to understand how they're telling you to go to this place. If they're saying, hey, try this or, oh, maybe this. They don't know. They just want to help. And so what I realized at first, I'm like frustrated. But then when I realized that, no, this is just their culture. They're so nice. They don't want to say no. Like they don't know the answer, but they want to try and help you anyway. And I feel like just certain little small things like that about the culture help you understand why the women are so approachable and nice even if they don't like you they're not going to be rude you know what i mean if they shoot you down or whatever so you could feel a lot more comfortable doing that than you could in america for example you on mute you on mute okay yeah i would agree you can keep your ego and get rejected in south america you, you know, in the United States, you get rejected, man. They'll make you feel like you ain't shit. You know, so it, it, in, in South America, if you get rejected, you can be like, okay, that's fine. She just wasn't interested. Let me go to the next. Exactly. Stateside chicks will make you want to quit. You're so, right. Uh, <laughs> they'll make you want to quit. So how significant? So you already brought this next question up. Uh, you had to learn the local language. I was about to ask you how important is the language barrier in dating, but... Um, <laughs> There's just certain things that you can't communicate properly through the translator. Uh, it's just good that you learn her language. So what are some social norms in dating that are specifically or unique to Colombia? What are some mm, things that are normal there? Like if a girl in the States, if you invite her out on a date and say, you know what, let's go to this bar and let's go grab a big album. If you um, if you ask her, my bad, my, my girl is bringing me a beer real quick. But if you ask a chick in the United States, hey, let's go out to a bar and grab a drink. And she responds with, OK, but is it OK if I bring my friends or my cousin or whatever? You're going to be looking at her like, OK, you're just trying to take advantage. You know, you see an open wallet. So while it's open, you're trying to get as much as you can out of this transaction. At least that's the way that I would look at it. But that's actually the norm in Colombia, especially for a woman that's going out on a date with you for the first time, she's probably going to want to do it in a group setting to get comfortable with you. Then after that, it's all good. So that was definitely something that I noticed um, affected the dating culture. So you got to keep that in mind. Don't come with the American mentality. Understand, hey, you in Colombia, this is normal here. You know what I mean? So did you have to pay for her friends too, or is it just? Yeah, yeah I pay. Do I mean, you know, it's nothing. I think we went to like a, I, I think I've done this maybe twice, and I don't remember spending more than 50 or 60 bucks for all three of us. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then at the same time, you kind of look like the man. You at the table, and you're the only one with all of these chicks showing up. You know what I mean? So I've done it. They tried to yeah. get me for 350 I wasn't going for it, though, because I didn't know that ahead of time. I had to have some guarantee waiting on me for that. Uh, yeah. It happened in Paraguay. They, they tried to get me with that one. So um, what about Brazil? What, what is it? What is, what is something that's socially just a normal thing in Brazil? Uh, kissing on the first date is super, super normal. Um, women being affectionate. Dude, it don't even have to be a first date. You could literally eyeball a chick across the room at the club. And five minutes later, y'all are making out in front of everybody. And to me, that was like the weirdest shit ever when I first got yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that. When I, when I first noticed that that happened, a chick tried to kiss me just immediately like that. I told her, I was like, you know, like, that's kind of fast. I was like, I want to kiss you, but like, we just started talking like two minutes ago. And they right. were telling me, like, oh, like in Brazil, like, it's we don't look at it like that. It just happens on the spot. You could, hey, how are you doing? You know, I thought I saw you. I thought you were beautiful. Yeah, let's exchange numbers. What are you doing later on? All right, I'll see you then. Then you kiss. That could be a whole 45 second conversation. She wants you to tongue kisser um, man that the other thing too is 
like it is not abnormal here to meet a woman and go on a date the exact same day. Where very as, normal. Yeah, like in the states, you know what I mean. You get a chick's number, you gotta text her up. You gotta follow all of these stupid rules. I can't double text. I have to wait for her to respond to respond back, so I don't look thirsty. It's all of these little games that you gotta play. Where I feel like the culture here is a lot more forward. There's no games. It's all real. And one thing that I didn't like about the American chicks is, you know, dudes and women would make would make excuses for them, uh, and they would say like, "Oh, like maybe they're busy. They're, they're not fucking, they ain't doing shit. They are not busy. They are just purposely ignoring you. They ain't. They once they leave work, their life is over with. But um, you can meet a chick. South America has spoiled me in this way. If I can't get a date on the first day that we meet, I'm not. I'm not." Like I'm like she doesn't like me like that, right? You, you know that I've I've came, but I'm in Sao Paulo. It's not like that in Rio. It's like that, but in Sao Paulo, I, I'm not kind of seeing it the same way. Uh, I'm having I'm going on dates, but I'm having to talk to them for a couple of days as opposed to Rio. Like you said, you meet them on the street. Okay, it's two in the afternoon. Let's meet at six o'clock. They'll be there. More than likely, they'll be there. But uh, it's got me spoiled. That's another reason why I couldn't adapt when I was in the states because. Like the whole game, I, no, I'm not into that. Like, listen, I just got back from Brazil and everywhere else. Let's meet later on. I don't have time. Don't ask me all these stupid questions. So um, what about traditional gender roles? Um, and like, what are the gender roles you would say that you notice in Colombia that you didn't see in the States? You just said it. Traditional gender roles, where that feels like a, a, a <laughs> it feels like a dying concept. You know what I mean? In the states, to be able to take on a woman and say, "Hey, I have enough money to hold down this whole household. You don't have to work." I hear many women say, even if they were in that situation, they would still want to work because they don't want to depend on a man. They don't want to, you know, they want to make their own money. Yeah, it's just. You don't see those things here. Women are okay with saying, you know what? I'm just going to hold down the house. You go be the man, bring the money home, and I'll take care of everything else. And I appreciate that. Honestly, that's what I'm looking for. You know what I mean? I was looking for a woman to be a homemaker. I'm not looking for a partner. I don't need your fucking money. I don't need a business partner. You know what I'm saying? I need a real woman. So, Agreed. Agreed. Uh, and that's just something that in the States, that's not really a thing. I'm going to get back to that um, here in a second. So a little antsy and fight off, but can the tourists buy any bud THC not in the CBD in the bud shops in Uruguay? Uh, yes, but don't take my word for it. I'm not, you won't have an issue buying it, but I don't know if it's legal for me to tell you that. So I'm not telling you to do it, but you can buy it. Uh, I can I could speak on that because I was just in Uruguay. Basically, it's legal there. Matter of fact, Uruguay is a very interesting country politically. It is the most liberal place in the world. Like we talk about liberals and Democrats or whatever in the states. They are not in Uruguay. Liberals on paper or liberals by association. They are liberal in real life. And you see it in practice, such as things like being the first country to fully legalize marijuana. But as a tourist, no, you can't buy it. You have to have a Uruguayan ID in a, uh, to be able to walk into the shop and buy it. Now, if you could get your hands on something, and you're walking around the street smoking, nobody's going to stop you, right? Because it's legal. So, Yeah. Yeah, I went to one of those THC shops in Uruguay, and uh, they I didn't buy any weed, but I bought some of the mate infused with oh, yeah. uh, THC or whatever. Yeah. That was some of the best... That, that was some of the best mate I've ever had in my life. And they're all good to me, but that one was just off the chain. Yeah. So uh, Rodney Woods sent $10 on a super chat. Thank you very much. And Brandon Hayes, the next one, five dollars. A quick question. Does Rico have any perspectives on colorism in South America and how it relates to how the women feel about foreign men? Yeah, man. So like, that's a question that, um, you know, I kind of touched on earlier in terms of why I feel like Brazil is a better place for black men as opposed to other places. And it's not to say that you can't have success in any country because you absolutely can, but in terms of expanding your options and having the most available women that are into you to choose from, um, that, that does come into play and colorism does matter because they are very colorist in South America. You don't, for example, in Brazil, even in Colombia, you don't see a lot of black people on the news 
You don't see a lot of black people in politics, which was why it was such a big deal for the current Colombian president to have uh, not only a female vice president, but a black female vice president. Um, those are things that you really just don't see often. So there's this, I've even noticed with some of the women that they kind of have like this white savior mentality. No offense to anybody who is of uh, Caucasian descent. I'm just being honest. They look at it as, you know, we are not used to seeing black men with money. We're not used to seeing black men with wealth. The only ones they see like that are typically either the white, uh, the European descendants of their own country or European tourists, uh, white tourists. So in their mind, for the, the best chance for them at a better life is to like breed out, date outside of their race. You know what I mean? So um, yeah, like even in Colombia, you're going to have a segment of women that's just like, no, I don't think black guys. I've, I've literally seen that before. Yeah, I was talking to a local, uh, what was it, maybe Friday or Thursday, and he, he lived in the United States. And he told me that, can you hear that background noise? No. Okay, good. Uh, he told me that um, when he lived in the States, he noticed that the Blacks there were very pro, but he's been all over the world. And he said that the Blacks were very pro-Black. And when you think about it, the only slave colonies around the world, I think we are the, the ones that actually embrace Blackness the most. Like you go to, and he was saying, when you come back to Brazil or Colombia or somewhere in Latin America, people, it's almost like some people don't even want to be in public with you. You know, it's like they... They're, the chicks will smash you, but being, and this is generally speaking, not all the time, but they'll smash you, but mm, bringing you home to mom, that's not always going to be the easiest thing, uh, you know, in Latin America, I notice. Um, so, yeah, colorism is definitely a huge thing, uh, but you, I, I don't, on a day-to-day -day basis, you won't be getting discriminated like somebody walking up and calling you a nigga to your face. Like, that won't happen, but it's just little passive aggressive slight stuff that i think that you'll see uh, from what i've noticed uh so uh what about traditional roles in uh brazil like was it the same thing as colombia oh yeah definitely the same thing i mean right now i have you know a woman you know on the on the path to getting married it's just a matter of paperwork for me fbi background mm -hmm. check yada 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 but she is almost eight months pregnant so uh we're expecting july 28th right around the corner she doesn't work you know what i mean i pay all of the bills i hold it down um she has ideas like oh i could you know sell clothes or open up a clothing store or do this and those are little ideas that i'll invest in to give her some kind of a purpose outside of the house because i don't think any woman or anybody just wants to sit at home all day you know just watching kids cleaning and cooking so you have yeah. to be full of that. But is, she's completely OK with her role and her position as being like the traditional homemaker. You know what I mean? I would agree. I would agree. Now, I don't I don't think many women want to just sit at home. They have to have something to do. Uh, but I guess maybe back in the day that was OK. So let's talk about something that most dudes are hip to now, which is dating apps. How would you say did you use dating apps anywhere? in between Brazil and Colombia. Yeah, I was I, I definitely used it in Colombia, bro. I had mass success out there on like Tinder and Bumble. What about uh so you think the success was better in Colombia than Brazil? Well I never really used dating apps in Brazil to be honest. I came here, uh the women that I dealt with on a casual basis were more like cold approaches or people that I met through friends. Like my girl, I met her at a restaurant and just cold approached. You know what I mean? So yeah, here we are two years later after I met her with a baby on the way. Um, but the dating apps definitely go crazy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and if you're looking for something more serious, I recommend Bumble. You like the same way they do in the States. It's like the, the girls who are more into looking for a relationship are on that app. And if you're looking for something a little bit more casual, you know what I'm saying? Tinder might be your, your go to there. So uh, I think. Um... If you're in Rio or let's say Salvador, like you can use day naps, but there's so many women walking around that are just super friendly to talk to. You don't really need a date. Like all you need to do is go outside. Right. You know, that's all, just that's go the to beauty. The beach. Just go to the beach and walk around. It really just don't go to, the beach is the spot. The beach yeah. is if you live in a uh, well, I wouldn't say that about all places in Brazil that have beaches because when I went to Hisife, it was dead on a Friday. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, versus Salvador, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it's three, four hundred people at the beach at one beach out of three or four every single day. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, but Salvador Rio beach culture is yes, yes, it's it's on point over there. So um, we already asked the next one. Have you ever done like an interracial relationship in Brazil? No, not in Brazil. In Colombia, I did. Uh, there was a chick that I was dating. Uh, you know, the white Colombian chick. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, leave those memories and try to lock those back in. She she was nice, man. She she was definitely a good girl, but I had already made up in my mind that I was moving to Rio, so that's why that didn't work out. So, would you say that it was was it perceived well by the public there in Colombia? Oh yeah, nobody cared. Yeah, nobody cared. I I don't think so either. Yeah. Okay, so are there any, are there any noticeable preferences or trends amongst Brazilian women? You already said that they do you believe that Brazilian women in general prefer white men? Some of them, some of them, but like for example, my girl, she she's never dated a white man and never will. She's like, I like black men and that's it. You know what I mean? And I meet a lot of Brazilian women like that, but I also meet some that are like, yo, I, I exclusively date white guys but i feel like in brazil those women are the minority the ones who say they only date white guys they're definitely the minority wow okay so what what do you think of a brazilian woman preferences not talking about race but like let's say physical attraction like what are they like uh it depends on which part of brazil because brazil is such a big country right like the South versus the North versus like the section near the Amazon and now some West where it's bordering the other countries on the West side. They all have different cultures. They have different slang, different food. And in a, it's the same way in Colombia, like the Costeños talk completely different from the Pisces have different foods. Uh, So I think a lot of those aspects of the culture are regional. Um, so it's, it's kind of hard to nail it down to have this one monolithic view of what all women want. But I will say from what I've noticed here in Rio, like because of the beach culture, because of the workout culture here, they don't want you to be sloppy. Don't think you about to come off the plane 300 pounds and yo, I'm going to kill it because my passport is blue. Don't work like that. So I think they definitely want you to uh, just not be sloppy. Um they don't necessarily want you to be like the the pretty boy. You don't got to be like Chris Brown. You know what I'm saying? But you got to maintain your appearance and look presentable. Um, I've, I've even had a woman, for example, in Colombia tell me she was like, oh, my, my man don't need to be pretty. I'm pretty for the both of us. I was like, damn. Wow. Never heard that before. You know what I mean? So that threw me for a loop. So I think they want you to be relatively attractive, uh, relatively in shape. Um, they do like height everywhere, but your height won't disqualify you. You know what I mean? I'm six seven, so you know my experience with that is is going to be different from everybody else's for sure. Uh, but I do notice that women tend to gravitate towards the taller guys, and you don't have to be rich, but you have to have enough money to be able to just take her out on dates. And she's not asking for five star restaurants, bro. You can take her to the bodega and go get you a five dollar meal and she cool so i think that the dating standards in brazil are a lot less a lot more relaxed than in the states where you got to be six seven fuck like a champ and you know drive a maserati and make 200k you gotta be a god yeah pretty much basically you gotta be a god uh so somebody asked a question and they said uh well let me ask you this too before we do this do you think tattoos help in Brazil? I see a lot of women with tattoos. So the, the women like tattoos too. I don't think that's something that'll disqualify you for sure. So you think they like edge? Do they, do they like the edge? Yeah. yeah. They like that edge, but it doesn't have to be like, I'm, I'm part of this organized crime edge. They just like that he got some personality to him or he, he's got a little edge. Well, that's what helps you out. If you come to Brazil and you're a black man and you're dealing with women that typically like black men, they tend to gravitate towards us more because of that edge. They're like, oh, shit, look at the way he dressed, you know, his swag, like um, the American hip hop music that they like. I'm not telling you to come down here and be a pookie, but I'm saying just be yourself. 
And if you have a little bit of edge to you, women gravitate towards that. So, agree, agree. So, uh, Urban City Hiking asks Rico, I know you're new to Brazil for a year, but in your opinion, what is the best city to buy a home? Man, that's tough because uh, now I've been to quite a few cities in Brazil, mostly down here near Rio. So, I've been to Sao Paulo, I've been, you know, of course, I live in Rio, uh, Cabo Frio, Ohio, Jacabo, Gramado. Um, Porto Alegre, Chuy, which is right on the border between Brazil and Uruguay. Uh, to be honest with you, I would say if it's about saving money, anywhere outside of Rio. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Anywhere. Rio is like relatively expensive, but I know the cheat code because I've been living here and I live in a neighborhood which I won't disclose on this live because I'm not trying to blow it up, but it's by the beach. Uh, is super cheap. You know, my first apartment here in Rio, I was paying $400 a month for a two bedroom apartment. And I was a three to five minute walk from the beach. You know what I mean? I see land for sale in this same area that I live in where you could get you a decent sized plot of land for like ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. I haven't seen a plot of land for sale for more than 30 grand. I know a guy, the guy who helped me find my first apartment is a real estate agent and his dad owns a construction company. I'm in talks with him right now about, you know, putting some stuff in motion to try to like buy some land and build a home here. And he was telling me, yo, you could build you like a decent three bedroom, two bathroom house with all concrete construction for like 20, 30 grand. I see condos for sale out here beachfront for like 100 grand. You know what I mean? So the best city is going to depend on your budget, like how much are you willing to spend and what's your vibe, right? Because not everybody likes Rio. Some people like Florianopolis. Some people like the south of Brazil better. I know a lot of people that like the north of Brazil better. So I would advise you to just come take a trip, try out different cities and see which one, you know, you gravitate towards. But in terms of prices, you can't go wrong. It's, it's going to be way cheaper than the States anywhere you go. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with you. Uh, I don't know what neighborhood you're in, but if, in Copacabana, yeah, if you want a beachfront, like I can throw a rock in the sand. If you know, there's just one little street separating us. That's gonna start at like fifteen hundred a month. You say right? Yep, that's accurate. which is cheap because that's almost what I was paying in Dallas, and I was in a it, just in the city, no beach nearby. But uh, it's expensive for being abroad. You know, it, it's expensive for being abroad. But yeah. So my next question for you is, what is the communication style like in Brazil? Would you say that they have a very romantic way of communicating with you in a relationship? Compare, let's compare it to the state. Let's compare the romanticism in Brazil compared to the United States. Oh, uh, yeah, man. Uh, it's, it's, it's on 10 out here. You know, like um, if you're dating a woman, she's going to text you. She's going to call you a more, you know what I mean? She's going to ask you, hey, have you eaten today? Like, what have you eaten? Like, dude, I'm in a whole nother country. And you texted me, like, have I eaten today? Because they really give a damn. Yep. You know what I mean? So I, I think that the culture, like, um, you know, what the, the hallmark of femininity, this is a quote from Rico, yo. The hallmark of femininity is vulnerability. So a woman who is not, who doesn't have the ability to rest in her vulnerability can't be feminine. And I feel like these women here are super, super feminine, bro. They don't mind being vulnerable and open with you, uh, showing affection, displaying their feelings. They're not going to come with this hard exterior in the shell and tell you, you know, get your, get your hammer and nail and, 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 and open up this hard case in order to get the real me. They, they present that up front. Yeah. That's, that's very that that logic that they got in the states like oh you know i'm because i love to make this comparison they say well we have to be around the right man to be feminine so let, let me flip your logic i'll be feminine until i get around a white right woman then i'll start behaving like a man right see that sounds fucking crazy <laughs> that sounds crazy yeah but, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm gonna just be a bitch until you prove otherwise like who yeah. says you know what I mean? Whenever we're both behaving like bitches, then I'll start getting more solid. That that's what'll happen. I'll switch it. I'll turn into a man when I feel like it. Uh Cod God's uh, big Washington sent five dollars for I have two thousand in the bank and I feel like I don't have enough for a visit. You have enough for a visit and a risky visit. You can get no, you actually you don't have enough for a visit. 
because a round trip ticket for me from Texas was fifteen hundred dollars. So five hundred dollars, it you not you can you can get maybe two nights at an Airbnb, and then uh, you can penny pinch. So I would say you you when I travel, if I was traveling without a savings account, I would have at least enough money to get back home, which is usually around fifteen hundred dollars, no matter where you're at in the world, one way. Fifteen hundred dollars, and then uh, you need the entire trip to Brazil would cost you like three thousand. So I would have at least five thousand to my name because nice. you're gonna spend fifteen hundred on a plane ticket. If you stay a week, you might spend four hundred dollars on the Airbnb. So that's already almost two grand. Luckily, it's cheap, so you could probably survive off of five hundred dollars a week there. So yeah, you uh, at least have five grand first. So Dude, no, you don't have to go visit. That's the problem, though, because when you see how cheap everything is, you come down here like, oh, the bottle is only $80 tonight at the club. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that should get you because you just like swiping. Oh, this is so cheap. This is so. And then by the end of the trip, you're like, damn, how much did I spend? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yep. This is and why I feel sorry for y'all y'all boys from Texas, man, because in Florida, that's like a gateway to everywhere in South America. We I want to say a round trip flight from... Miami might be between 800 to 1,000. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A round trip. Because I remember a one-way buying a ticket the day before was $600 from Rio to Miami. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it, it wouldn't have been that way from Texas uh, last-minute trip, which means if I would have bought it in advance, it probably would have only been like 300 bucks. Yeah. So um, what about in Colombia? Would you say how – were the women very romantic in Colombia? Yes and no. And I know I'm going to get heat for this, especially from people who are big proponents of Colombia. But I feel like the women in in Brazil are authentic, right? So if they're saying, me, they are calling you a more, they're feeding you off of their plate, showing you affection, kissing you, rubbing your head in public, whatever, whatever, they mean that shit because they really dig you. You know what I mean? I feel like it's a part of the culture in Colombia. So... They do that to everybody, you know, like a, a woman doing that to you doesn't necessarily make it special. And a lot of the times it's an act. And if you're not aware of the culture, if especially you brothers who have never had attention from women to be able to tell whether a chick is truly into you or not, you'll get fooled because you're like, oh, my God, she called me Mia Moore. She took her fork and spoon fed me in, in front of everybody. It's like, nah, bro, they, they literally do that to everybody. You know what I mean? So it's still a better deal than what you would get on a date in the States. You know what I mean? I would rather you pretend that you like me than, than just act like you don't while I'm paying. But at the same time, it's like I <laughs> I like that about Brazil a lot more that the women are a lot more real. I feel like in Colombia, a chick will kind of play the long game and see what she can get out the deal. She might not like you that much, but she'll stick around if you got some money. Oh, yeah. Well, well, some people would argue, well, like, all oh, women want something. They're going to do that anywhere you go. What would you say about that? That's partially true, but I think that the barrier to entry is just a lot less, and, and women are a lot more realistic, right? Like, if I were to take, and I've done this before, you know, I take a chick on a trip and I fly her out like, yo, you know, we in Santa Marta or whatever, like, yo, let's go fly out to Medellin for the weekend and go party. And if I tell her, hey, this is the air. We stand in a hostel. Fuck an Airbnb. Bump a five star. We stand in a hostel. She's happy with just getting a free trip. She don't care. I didn't do that. I mean, we stayed in a nice Airbnb, but I know the mentality of the women. They're not having like these unrealistic expectations of you um, in scenarios like that. Okay. Uh, I would agree. So have you encountered any cultural misunderstandings uh, dating in Brazil, in Colombia? Hmm. Like something that would be normal and okay in the States that wasn't, that didn't really fly or they had it in those other countries? I would say sometimes the way that you speak can be, especially as Americans, we could be a lot more direct. And sometimes that may come across as a little bit rude. So the way that you phrase things and the way that you say it matters a little bit. 
but I, I don't think I've had a lot of misunderstandings culturally um, outside of outside of language barriers. I don't think I've had too many issues with that. Hmm. Okay. And you're saying that for Brazil and Colombia? Yeah. Okay. That's good. That's good. I've had, I guess, the, the cultural misunderstandings. Off the top of the head, I can't really think of too many besides a chick that thinks that I'm trying to control her by paying for a damn plane ticket. Uh, <laughs> so how do Brazilians, have, what is a Brazilian's attitude towards commitment and casual dating differ from the States? Like, how do they view commitment compared to the States and how do they view just casual hookups, I guess, or just dating slowly compared to the States? Uh, I think it depends on the girl. If you have like the party girl who's out every weekend, she's probably going to be the type that's a lot more open to the casual situation. You know what I mean? But if you have a girl who's not like that, you know, she's not the party girl, uh, they probably want something a lot more serious. And those are typically the ones that you want to build a life with, that you want to settle down with, be serious with. And I feel like those are the ones they make you work a little bit more. It's still not a lot of work compared to the bullshit we deal with in America, right? But there is, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's not exactly like easy mode either. You got to talk to them, prove that you're a man of value, prove that you, you know, will treat them well, and then you can kind of take it from there. Yeah. Yeah. So all the chicks, all the chicks aren't just quick hookups in Brazil and stuff like that. It's just more common. Uh, and it's, it's completely different from the States, but yeah, I can agree with this. So how important is uh, the family approval? Like you've met your girl's family, right? Yeah. You know, how, how was that process? Was it just smooth or did they have an issue with you being a foreigner or I'm assuming not because I've seen your stories. Yeah. Yeah. Not at all, man. I, I think that um, most of them are, are open with it. They, they probably kind of like uh, they they big it up. They like, oh shit, my daughter's got a gringo. You know what I mean, girl? You better not fuck this up. Like, yo, I've I've dealt with women who their mother is like, will check them. Like, you better not mess this up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So. And they still fucked it up. Yeah, they did. <laughs> <laughs> what country would you say you heard that the most at Brazil or uh, Colombia, where their parents would be like, oh, you better not fuck this up? Uh, just because I haven't had as many dating experiences in Brazil, I'm going to say Colombia based on my experience. Okay. So I would assume both then, yeah. uh, this, this, are the women like eager for you to meet their family? Like I know in the States, uh, most of the chicks really weren't eager for me to meet the family. Man, it is not uncommon for you to meet the family after like the second or third date. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Matter of mm -hmm. fact, some of the dates might be them inviting you to a family function. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know I mean? I've had and, that in Salvador. Bro, and the way that I've noticed and kind of like peaked the situation in terms of how the families interact, you know what I mean? You could tell that the women get training. It's not kind of like how women go to charm school, or at least they used to back in the day. Um, in the States, it's like they get charm school at home. If you get up and try to go grab a beer from the cooler or you get up and try to go make your plate, that that mom is going to check shorty like, yo, what are you doing? Why is he making his plate right now? Why is he grabbing a beer? You know what I mean? So in a lot of instances, I kind of like being around the family because you can tell what you're getting yourself into by how the mother treats you as well. Yeah, when I had a chick from Rio that I was dating and she moved to uh, Jersey. And uh, she invited me to her mom actually lived, not her mom, her aunt. I believe it was her aunt she was living with. Let me have the car because her daughter, her niece was with me. She let me have the car for the whole weekend. Word. She, yeah, she let me have a car for the whole weekend while we were in Jersey. And then um, she, uh, when I went to their family function, it was like a bunch of Brazilians in that city in Jersey. And she made her fix the plate and makes my make my drinks for me. Her aunt made her niece do that. So I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, and that was in the States. Even, you know, even though no, they've came to the States, she was new there. I'm pretty sure she still do that because she doesn't even seem like she's been assimilating to the American culture that much at all. So 
uh, how do Brazilians feel about public displays of affection, which we know how they feel about that? Oh, yeah, man. That That is on 10. They love it. You know what I'm saying? They don't mind kissing you uh, in public. Um, you know, it is very rare to be able to walk around and, and your woman not hold your hand. Like, yo, I remember first time I met my girl, we were literally on the way to the Samba Drone to go and watch the parade for Carnival. And I'm fitted up. I got my son, you know, my my uh, my carnival fit on, looking fly. And um, this is before I knew a lick of Portuguese. Is, you know, that's when I met her. I didn't know Portuguese. And uh, she's written. She wrote something in the translator and showed it to me. And she was like, "Give me your hand." All of these women are staring at you. I was like, "Damn." <laughs> you know, so it, it, it wasn't even just about the public display of affection in that manner. It was about the fact she was willing to compete. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah, we've definitely lost that competition in the states. They don't. They're not going to compete for you at all. Uh, pretty much, there. You have to make a fool out of yourself to compete in the states. Uh, there it seems like. So, do you think that that public display of affection and how open they are to just showing everybody that they want you to be theirs makes you closer in dating? Do you think it affects how that entire relationship goes as opposed to somewhere else? No, nah, big big time, man. Because instead of you, you know what? When I left the states, to be honest, it wasn't even about dating. It was about money. When I found out that. Um, if you live outside of the states for 330 days in the calendar year, then the first 120 grand you make is tax free. I had made a lot of money that year because I was working two full time jobs. And I was like, yo, Uncle Sam kicked my ass. So I found out about that loophole. I packed up my shit and I left. It, it wasn't until I was boots on the ground that I kind of found out about um, I found out about the women and the dating culture and all of that good stuff. But as opposed to my experiences in the States before leaving, if you saw a six, seven man uh, in his early 30s, no kids, no baggage, no ex-wife that he's paying alimony to, none of that, right? In shape, great career, six-figure earner, that guy you would assume would be cream of the crop. But I felt like every woman that I was dating was trying to make me prove myself to them as if my resume didn't prove didn't speak for me you know what i'm saying they ain't got shit. and they ain't got shit. exactly like yo i'm making six figures and and and, and you a fucking school you a school teacher and it's not the not teachers we need them i love teachers right but i'm just saying like in terms of in terms of like the salary difference like shorty you need to be proving yourself to me you got it all fucked up so i feel like when you're dating in Brazil, you know what I'm saying? The, the, the women are going to show you like, yo, I want you. I'm here for you. I'm going to compete for you. And you don't feel like, oh, damn, it's, it's this is how it's always supposed to be versus like what we see in the States, which is in reverse, where you as the man, no matter how high value you are, feel like you're always behind the eight ball having to prove yourself to a woman. And so I think a lot of the, the, the public display of affection kind of helps reinforce, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the idea that like, nah, like I'm, I'm not in America. This woman really digs me and this ain't a game. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, I would agree. I 100% agree with everything you said. I can't, I couldn't be over there in the States again. So uh, how does the nightlife in Rio influence the dating scene? How does the nightlife influence the dating? Um, I would say that it makes the women a lot more approachable and open because they're used to being in social environments. They are used to being in settings where they have to interact with other people that they don't know. So they don't have this attitude of, oh, let's all go click up and buy a VIP section dance with each other and ignore every man in here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I know you're not done with that shit, bro. You know yeah. what I mean? So, so I think that the fact that the nightlife here is so popping, they have so many opportunities to be able to interact with people that they just are more open as a result. 
Yeah, I, 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 I've I, noticed that about the States a long time ago. I would always ask chicks, like, so why didn't you and your friends just, like, drink at home? Yeah, y'all could have just drank it. Y'all could have listened to music and danced in, in front of the TV. You know, right. you didn't have to be a bitch at the club to everybody. You know, this is a social setting. So that's one thing I've enjoyed about uh, Brazil is that social settings are actually social settings. They're there. People are there to socialize with each other. Um uh, so how important is it to you said you met your girl through a well you met her at a restaurant but you've met women through social circles like mutual friends is that essential like how important is that in brazil oh it's very important all over south america i think that when you're let's say dealing with some chick and y'all are just friends or maybe you just uh you know a local guy and he invites some women out you know what i mean the fact that people mess with you enough to invite you out speaks to your character because they're not going to bring people around that's going, you know, mess up the vibe, be on some pooky behavior or just like um, not kind of know how to conduct themselves. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like um, if, if, if you are able to get into those circles and just show that, yo, I'm a good human being and I'm a decent guy, people will gravitate towards that. And as a result, the women are a lot more open to you when they see you in their own circles that they're used to dealing with. Okay, so let me ask you this too. This is kind of something that a lot of people like to criticize sometimes is what about economic disparities? Like the, the gap between a local Brazilian woman you may be dating uh, versus an expat. Most of us, if we're earning the basic salary of like 50 grand, we're considered rich in these other countries. Uh, how does that affect the dynamics in the relationship like does it does it make you feel like the women are leeches or i'm not saying it or i'm just saying what somebody might be thinking nah man i well so it, it just depends because like i said for example by contrast in colombia i felt like a lot of the women um if they knew you had money and you aren't the type of guy who is wise enough or has enough experience with dating and women to realize when a woman is truly into you you could kind of get suckered out of that money whereas here i've noticed in brazil women are a lot more headstrong and independent but not like the american woman independence right i mean like just in a sense they are like i'm not gonna wait around on a man to take care of me i'll go get a job i'll work and do what i have to do but if one so happens to come into my life uh that is capable i'm not going to um i'm not going yeah i'm not going to shoot him down or i'm not going you know make him play all of these games and prove himself to me you know it's it's not that kind of situation so it's pretty much a natural situation <laughs> for sure yeah so what are some common expectations uh let's say financial or uh even just uh let's say romantically that brazilian that let's say in south of it in between colombia and brazil what are some common expectations you notice compared to the states that were different like uh kind of like we just touched on with the financial things you kind of touched on it throughout the whole stream but um uh, i guess paying for the first date you know that's expect like you're not coming to south america and doing 50 i've only done that maybe once and it wasn't 50 50 she paid you know that that was and usually if they go 50 50 with you they're not they're well, definitely like, not with you yeah you're just a friend we splitting this yeah. bill you're the amigo you know what i'm saying like yeah. um i would say that the expectations are the the expectations everywhere in the world to be honest with y'all boys is the same as it is in the States. They're expecting a man who is well grown. They're expecting a man who knows how to carry himself. They're expecting a man who can provide, right? But provision in these South American countries doesn't require as much money as America, right? So, so you could definitely win on that end. But I would say that, like I said, I think it's, it's the same. I think the barrier to entry is just a lot lower. But what I will say from my experiences in Brazil, and I'll give you a real story. One time I got into it with my girl, and this was early in us dating, right? We got in this argument about some stupid shit. I can't even remember what it was. You know what this girl told me? Mind you, I'm paying all her bills. She don't have a job. She's living with me, handling everything. She said, you ever raise your voice at me again, I'm leaving. She meant that shit. I haven't done it since. 
You know what I'm saying? You know how you is. You just heated a moment argument type shit. But that right there showed me like as much as people in the States want to say that these women here are doormats, you can just walk over them because you're an American with money. I don't find that to be the case at all. I think Brazilian women, especially the black Brazilian women, have a lot of pride and they're not on some like, I'm just going to take anything and, and accept anything that you give me just because you have money. Wow. Yeah, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I've had a few altercations, not many, but I've had a few like that with uh, women in Latin America. Dre, they sent $10 for, how did you learn Portuguese and how long did it take? Great show, Austin. Thank you for the super chat. I learned through Duolingo, but I didn't master it. And I'm not a master, but I didn't get it down until I moved down here. Basically, somebody gave me a, a bag of vocabulary words in Brazil. And I knew all the words, but I had to learn how to put them together efficiently. What about you? For me, learning uh, Portuguese was really an extension of me learning Spanish. So mm -hmm. I knew Spanish really, really well. I still do, of course, right? Like I was living in Colombia. I think it was a lot better and a lot more fluent while I was like living there. I haven't lived in a Spanish speaking country in over a year now, but a lot of the words are the same. Like literally the word word in Spanish is palabras or palabra. Uh, P A L A B R A, right? But in Portuguese, it's palavra with a V instead of a B. And even if you don't know Portuguese, if you know Spanish really well and you come and visit Brazil, the words, some of the words are so similar, you'll just understand what it means without having ever seen the language. The mm -hmm. conjugations for verbs are damn near identical. So like for me, it was an easy transition because I knew Spanish. I was able to pick it up. I haven't like when I was in Colombia, I took a Spanish class for a couple months just to get my visa. I had already been learning on my own anyway, uh, but that definitely accelerated things. Like, for example, being able to learn how to speak in the past tense versus everything being present tense when you just like kind of learn in Spanish or whatever. Uh, but yeah, that translated really well when I got here and I was able to just pick it up. So after being here, I don't even use Duolingo no more, dude. And like my my Portuguese is dope. I have whole conversations with people. I handle business, you know, security guards up front call up here. Hey, you got a delivery or whatever. I understand exactly what they're saying. I'm able to communicate back. Um, so but I will say Duolingo is an excellent resource because that's what I was using to help learn Spanish before you know i got into a, a class for it agreed agreed so uncle luke's 1980 cent ten dollars but hey fellow expats quick quick question do you think passport bros expats and blue book gentlemen are concerned about west women not caring or knowing about men dating and living overseas i don't think so no nah, not at all that that whole wave when i first got on youtube and there was that wave of dudes going back and forth that shit is over with like anybody that's still going any password bros that's still like you know trying to prove the point to them like it's they on their own with that now because i'm definitely not i mean if you ask me about it i might complain for a few minutes but i really don't give a damn anymore you know i've been going for two years now so it's uh it, it's it's a figment of my imagination and i once told you, you huh once you solve the problem there's nothing to talk about yeah, and I'm 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 at a point in my life now where I look if that's who you are, that's who you are. I just don't have to fuck with you. You're masculine. You got a a, a brick wall around your heart. You can't open up emotionally. You feminine until you you're masculine until you're feminine. That's fine. Just stay the hell away from me. So, uh, how do safety concerns impact the dating? Uh, I mean, how do safety concerns impact dating in real? Yes, uh, for you as a foreigner, not at all. Not like Medellin. Shit, I didn't even think it impacted it in Medellin. I think y'all niggas is just some suckers and don't know how to move. I'm, I'm gonna be real. Y'all getting drugged and 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 got because you know it's a lot of dudes. Once again, like y'all don't know how to differentiate between women who are playing the long game to get what they can get out of you versus a woman who's actually into you. So it's like, bro, you know your level. All right. If you were in the States and you weren't pulling no bad joints, why do you think this dime piece in Colombia just like wants you for no reason? Like, come on, bro. You know your level. Like, be honest with yourself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, 
I don't I don't think the safety concerns affected at all. As a, as a matter of fact, some of my best experiences was when girls invited me to parties out in the favelas or out in the barrios in, in Colombia and I'm around locals, local block parties. Nobody there is a gringo. Nobody speaks English. Those are some of my best experiences. So we have a question uh, from one of my moderators. He said, what about the Asian guy that got deleted in uh, Medellin? Was he a sucker? It's yes. not that he... <laughs> <laughs> it's not that he was a well, Rico says yes, but uh, again, like he said, it's like he was saying earlier, it's not you guys don't know how to move. And if, when I saw the picture of the girl, you know, I was kind of like, oh, no, like, kind of like, even just looking at her, she didn't look that like she didn't look like the trustworthy Colombian chick, if you ask me. So it just goes back to being aware of what you're dealing with. You know, being being able to read signs, you know, so uh, long term versus short term uh, is long term very common in Rio or is it short term that's more common? I think long term is more common because Rio is a bubble, right? Like you come to Rio, women are a lot more open, laissez faire because of the culture here, the beach culture, the party culture. Uh, once the moment you get outside of Rio, that shit changes completely. Yep. And women are a whole lot more on some like, yo, we need to talk for a few days before we go on the first date. Let me fill you out. Um, they're a lot more serious um, about their dating prospects. Yeah, if you if Rio is definitely a place to uh, if for like what it is for, you know, it's a tourism spot for dudes that want to come down there and just kick it for the weekend or kick it for a week. But the place like Salvador, like I've had, I've had plenty of chicks. Like the first date always went, you know, how I wanted it. I guess you could say, but it wasn't always same day. You know, uh, it was very often like that, but not always. I ran into more chicks that did want to talk for a couple of days, like you just said. Uh, versus Rio, yeah, that was that was that they're exposed to foreigners, right? Um, so, what was your worst experience online dating in Colombia? Oh, man. Yo, so I meet this one chick, right? And uh, I think I met her on Bumble. So I'm thinking, you know, she's a little bit more serious, right? So, um, you know, I'm talking to her for a few days and then I invite her out on a date. And it was one of them situations where she asked me, oh, is it okay if I bring my cousin or whatever? It's our first time meeting. I'm like, cool, right? This was like, I, I set the date up for like the weekend and it must have been like a Tuesday or Wednesday or something like that. In between the time of her um, accepting this date, she starts sending me all of these naked pictures and videos and shit like that. And I'm like, yo, what is up with this? Like, yo, this ain't, and I, I'm new to Columbia. I'm new to all of this. So I'm just kind of trying to figure things out. Um, Shorty was a pro and, and I had no idea, you know what I'm saying? But I didn't like the vibe of the date because when we went on a date, everything was cool. I paid for her, paid for her cousin that she invited. But then afterwards, she was like, oh, you know, I need some medicine from the pharmacy. You think you could help me out? It was just like this real awkward. I, I just wasn't feeling it at all. So I'll tell you what I did, which is like this is no cap in my rap. Um, you know, dreadlocks is hard to find people to do your hair uh, in Colombia sometimes. So I asked the girls, I'm like, hey, yo, y'all know anybody that know how to retwist locks? And she's like, oh, my cousin can. I'm like, word, okay, bet. Put your number on my phone. So I got her cousin's number. Her cousin eventually ended up coming to the crib to do the hair. And, you know, one thing led to another. And that was that. So, you know. Did you still get your hair done? Yeah, she, she did my hair afterwards. Oh wow! Yeah, bro. Damn. She was like, "Oh, what's up? You, you, I thought you was talking to my cousin." I said, "No, nah, I don't like her like that." She was like, "Yeah, she is a little crazy," and that was that. For some reason, I feel I've heard this story before. Oh, uh, so have you encouraged any stereotypes about you being an American uh, abroad and between Brazil and Colombia? Not at all. Actually, I think that I'm the type of guy that tries to do everything I can to not project that American attitude. And I, I don't think everybody's of that mindset because a lot of people come here with a superiority complex. Mm -hmm. Oh, I make 
in dollars. I'm, I'm richer than you. Fuck you. You know, you are, you know, they, they treat people like they're supposed to be their waiters everywhere they go instead of treating them like real people. And that could be very off-putting to the local population, whereas you see a lot of people in Medellin right now saying, yo, we don't want the gringos here. You know what I mean? Like they, they kind of want y'all gone for, a, you know, a lot of the shit that y'all do coming in the club, throwing money, you know what I'm saying? Putting the trick in on public display, which like, if that's what you do, no judgment, do you, but why display it publicly? Why make it this thing where, you know, I got to publicize it. I got to get on YouTube and like record all of the girls and talk about it. All of those things are fucking up the culture to the point where, you know, we are our own worst enemy because white guys been traveling for years before this whole passport bro movement started. And they never had those issues. I still know it's only us. So the clout chasing has got to stop. The oversharing has got to stop. Niggas is acting like the cats that got invited to the bachelor party and come back and talk too much about it. That's that's basically, you know what I'm saying? What, what the vibes is. So. Agreed. Agreed. I'm doing these interviews. I'm looking to get out of that. Well, I'm already out of that. I'm, I'm to a point where now if you the only way you'll see women in my videos if I'm walking down the street not asking for directions. But the whole you know, I, I said this yesterday, but I interview a woman, you're like, oh, so how do you feel about feminism? And these women are this more feminine. Look, if you want to know how the woman, woman is more feminine, just like the restaurant girl video I had on Twitter that went by. I was just asking her, you know, to speak to the camera. She was asking me what my name was. That was enough. I don't need to interview her. I don't need to compare her to American women, even though I used to do that stuff. The more I started doing it, I'm like, uh, look at the people that's in my chat. These motherfuckers did, you know, not all of them, but you got some dudes that are just straight perverts and like that's all they care about. Right. And it's like, well, for me, that's not the thing, right? Because I'm looking at which I am, I'm living abroad. So it's not all just about the women. Like, I do want to see, you know, can I walk down the street and not get my phone snatched? Like, I want to know those kind of things. You know, I want to know how much it costs to be there. So uh, there are other things to share. And I think content creators like that would be a lot more welcome than the dudes uh, that are just in Pattaya and the DR that are just showing you guys a bunch of prostitutes. Yeah, I, cool. can, I, can, I can see that. So um, what about Carnival and dating? Well, I guess it's not necessarily dating. Can you tell me what happens during Carnival uh, between men and women in that time frame? What, what you've experienced? Bro, like... I didn't go to any of like the block parties, uh, the blockos is what they call them. I, I didn't get a chance to uh, experience any of that um, in Rio, but I did get a chance to go to like the, the parade or whatever. I was in Porto Alegre, however, this past uh, carnival season and I attended down there. And so I got to go to a couple of the block parties, the street parades and stuff like that and do it's like everybody's getting loose. You know what I'm saying? Like in some regards, that shit's like the freak nigga. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, it could, it carnival could be wild, bro. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Yeah, yeah, it can be. I've heard a lot of things. I won't say it, but you know, people do stuff publicly in the street, and there's thousands and thousands of people. on uh, what, what's that street? Uh, Atlantic Atlantic Avenue, or yeah. Whatever. Yeah, that yeah, this I've seen photos. I I've never actually been doing a real carnival. I went in twenty twenty two, but it was during COVID, so it wasn't the real carnival. So, uh, let's see. What what do you think Brazilian women think of? Like when they think of America, if they if they're dating American man, what do you think it, that experience would be like for them? Like, what oh, do you think? How do you think about us? I think they love it because basically, you know, for example, the thing that I pointed out earlier about how, you know, if you're at a family function and the mom sees the, the girl getting up to make you a plate or like not getting up to make you a plate, like you're fixing your own plate, getting your own drink, they're going to check her about it. Um, Hold on, my bad. What, what was the question one more time? Make sure I'm phrasing this correctly. Um, so how do they perceive us in dating? Like, uh, do they think like, oh, like I don't want to date an American because they might be too demanding or they might be too cold? Like, how? Did, what is their perception of us? That's right. So the perception is that we are a better option than the local men, and it's not even about money. To be honest with you, I'm talking about an everyday living situation. For example, we here, you know, at my crib, 
if I see the dishes need to be washed and I got some free time, I'll jump in and do it sometimes. I'm not adverse to doing those things because, you know, we, we do that in, in America. You know what I'm saying? You're going to keep your own house clean. You're going to wash dishes. A lot of the times, like a lot of brothers like myself cook very well. I remember my mom was like, hey, you can't depend on these little young girls to cook for you. You better learn, you know, stuff like that. So if you get into a relationship with these women who are used to, to this macho attitude from the local dudes, like your place is the kitchen. I'm never getting in there cooking shit. I, I wish I would pick up a broom or a mop, you know? And then you come as an American who's actually willing to do those things from time to time, bro. They looking at you like you the second coming to Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I can see that. That we're a breath, of, a breath of fresh air to them, and vice versa. Because uh, I guess we come from a culture where the women are macho, so uh, <laughs> they treat us like we're the women, and vice versa. Uh, Chase Holiday sent files for peace, my brothers. What's the average rent in nice areas and what's the best city in Brazil? Somebody just asked that. Also, Austin, does Brazil feel better than Peru? Yeah, I like Brazil more than Peru uh, because there's more options. Like, in, I think in Peru, you really just got Lima, man. Like, I yeah. think those cities outside of that aren't going to really cater to what the Florida will want. But uh, I'll let you answer that question about the average rent again. Give me, give me, give me one second, Austin. I gotta uh, take a quick bathroom break. I'll be right back. Okay, that's no problem. We'll take a bathroom break real quick, you guys. Hit the like button. We'll be back in just a second. Yeah, to answer uh, Chase's question, the the rent, you're saying the average rent in the nice areas. I would say, for example, Baja de Tijuca here in um, in Rio is probably one of the most sought out after areas because you know how it works in any major city. They do all of their development in the central part of the city. And then over the years, as time goes by, they kind of build that out. Then they need more space to build more shit and then they move outward. So now most of the development is, is happening west of the central part of Rio. Because at first it was like Copacabana, Ipanema, then Leblon was the new money area. Then after Leblon came Baja de Tijuca, now it's the area where I live. And I'll just tell y'all, it's, it's called Hakreu. It's literally uh, right next to Baja de Tijuca. And I know you fools ain't coming out here anyway, because you know it's not the tourist spot. But what I will say is like, if you have a thousand dollars a month, and like the upper class neighborhoods, you could get a really, really nice spot in like Baja de Tijuca for about a grand a month. I can see that. I can see that. I can see that in most of, actually a thousand dollars a month in most of South America, even a place like Chile where it's super expensive will get you a, a nice spot. Even I think even Uruguay, if, if you sign a lease, not on Airbnb, uh, <laughs> a lease because yeah, no, they don't. Airbnb in Montevideo is not cheap. If, if you stay on the good side, where you, where you want to be at, where everything is at, you tell me like eight. I think I seen like eighteen hundred dollars a month for Airbnb in Montevideo. Oh, that's wild. Yeah, I don't yeah. like Montevideo like that to, to be paying that much. I mean, like this spot that I'm living in here, it's a three bedroom. I had a two bedroom, but you know we have a kid on the way. Needed a little bit more space, so we upgraded and got this uh this three bedroom here. And it's a whole lot more than I want to pay, to be honest with you, but it's extremely nice. So at about $1,500 a month, and I'll just go ahead and maybe show you guys a little bit here if I can. 
Oh, man, you know what? It's not even using the right camera, so I can't. But this condo that I'm staying in, it's like 24 hour security. It's got like um, Salauja Festas, which is like the party or an event space. We have two of those. We have a gym on site. We have two swimming, two swimming pools. We have two swimming pools behind the two swimming pools that are just like for playing volleyball in the water. Uh, tennis court, basketball courts. We have uh, a supermarket on site. We have uh, uh, Salaj Beleza, which is like a uh, the place where ladies go and get the hair and nails done and all of that. All of that's on site. 24-hour security, $1,500 a month. You, you're not getting all of that for $1,500 in the States. Yeah, not. Nowhere. Now, maybe in the backwoods of Mississippi, but nobody wants to be there. Right. So uh, we know the United States was kind of affected by social media with dating. Uh, a lot of people like to blame the dating culture in the United States on social media. But my argument always is they got social media in Kenya. They got it in Brazil. And it, the experience is completely different. So um, what do you think? Do you think that uh, social media has affected the dating market or influenced uh, different behaviors in Brazil and Colombia? Um, a little bit. I would say more so in Colombia than Brazil, because Brazil is a lot further. There's a bigger barrier to entry to come and play down here, right? Because, you know, it's a much longer flight. It's more expensive. Um, so if you don't have the ability to spend significant time, which most people who have regular jobs have to depend on PTO to do, and you only have so much PTO a year, Brazil probably ain't the spot. But Colombia is a lot easier to do a quick in and out weekend warrior type of vibe. And I feel like what happens is because the women there are so overexposed to gringos. You know what I'm saying? And I've dealt with that. You know what I mean? Like uh, with women that I dated, I'm not going to name them, in Colombia. The problem is they got so many of you thirsty ass niggas, especially the ones who speak English. They got so many of you thirsty dudes in their inbox and in their DMs, they feel like they got endless options. And then when they have a man that's serious about them, or really likes them, they feel like, oh, well, let me just stick on this hypergamy train and maybe see if something better comes along or um, they're going to treat you like you're expendable because they think they have options, which we all know is a farce because just some, just because somebody's in your DMs does not mean that they love you. It does not mean that they're willing to hold you down and take care of you. They probably just want to smash. But women never see it that way. And their perception becomes their reality in that sense of like what those DMs actually mean. So in that regards, I think a lot of the super top tier women, um, social media has affected it because they feel like they have a lot more options. Okay. So I'm going to read a couple of these super chats and then I got one more question for you. Uh, is downtown Rio still dangerous and safe to live? Is it safe to live there now? Yeah, for sure. Still dangerous. No, it's, it's not dangerous at all. I, I don't think that, um, I mean, honestly, you're not really running into a, into a lot of danger outside of the favelas. And uh, I mean, the most that's going to happen to you down here is somebody will try to snatch your chain. Somebody will try to snatch your phone out of your, your, out of your hand. It's like petty crimes, theft, crimes of opportunity, but somebody like trying to take your life really trying to fuck you up in that manner that that's not happening like that often and to be honest like if you're a gringo and you have american money why the hell would you even want to be in those types of places <laughs> you know what i mean for that for those types of things to occur so i would agree yeah that's a good way of putting it opportunistic crime that that's in most of these latin american countries being a foreigner it's going to be more opportunistic as a pro as opposed to um you get murdered or kidnapped, like they have to plan those things on you usually. It's like, oh, his chain is in a way where I can snatch it easier, his watch, yeah, whatever. Um, so Nubian Knight said, can Rico talk about his dating experience in the Afro-Latinas in Cali versus uh, Salvador by here? I don't think you've been to Salvador, have you? I have not, but the woman that I am with here in Brazil, and I mean, my uh, Instagram is in the, um, in the description there under my name, you can go to it and check it out. But my lady's posted all over there. It's no secret. She's uh, Afro-Brazilian. You know what I mean? Um, I don't have anything against other races or women. I just 
prefer black women. That's just my thing. Um, and I will say that the differences between the Afro Latinas in Colombia versus Brazil is just the sense of black pride here is completely different. In my opinion, these women are so pro black. They are so proud of their skin color. They are proud of their heritage. And I love that shit. I love it. You know what I mean? Compared to Colombia. Oh yeah. So would you say, cause one thing I love to say is I had a video that a lot of people to this day, I, I, I don't know how I do it, man. Some of these comments I see on a daily basis, but I was talking about if you're looking to date an Afro Latina, if you see them, there's not a lot in these areas I'm about to name, but if you do see them in Montevideo, Buenos Aires, uh, Lima, Peru, Medellin, if you see them in, or let's say Florianapolis, if you do see them there, you, you have less of a chance of actually dating them than if you were in Salvador Bahia or Cali, because right. it's it's like they're trying to breed out in those like they they feel like they don't like I said earlier like they don't want to be associated with you in public. Right. They because I've had some chicks when when I was in a uh, what was I at I believe I was in Lima and it was on a live video, and I was talking to these three black they were clearly black like they clearly had some African heritage and I'm just speaking like hey how y'all doing I'm they were just looking at me like I would shit. Like, you know, like, what are you doing talking to me? I turn around and there's a mestiza. I start speaking to her and she's giving me the time of the day. We exchange info and all that. Hey, let, me, I let, on, let, let me guess after she did that, then they wanted to be more open. They they seemed like they were like, oh, like, OK, but it was still just the 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 the, the, the assumption that they what? had about me in the beginning. It's like that's something that they're taught. Versus in Salvador, you walk down the street in Salvador, or Rio, or uh, Cali, Colombia, and chicks are looking at you that are that are also black. Uh, but in Montevideo, places like that, that really won't be the case. You know, it, it, they're they're gonna they're gonna kind of push away from you. Uh, so my last question for you is, what advice would you give to single men who are new to Brazil first, and then I'll let you uh, describe the Colombia. What, would, what advice would you give a single man who's new to Brazil that wants to come date? I would say that you um, don't objectify the women, first and foremost. And what I mean by that is if you come down here with this whole, dang, the women just so bad. I just want to I just want to smash a Brazilian. I just want to smash a Colombian. I think women can sense that desperation in your energy and they're going to treat you accordingly. You know what I mean? But. If, 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 for example, if you were serious about dating a woman in the United States, what would your motion be? You know what I mean? More than likely, your motion is let me make a connection with her. You know what I mean? Um, what do we have in common? What are some things that we can talk about in common? Oh, she likes this sport. You know, that's something we could talk about. Or she likes, um, you know, just something that y'all have in common to make some common ground. And the best way to do that here uh, in South America is music. You know what I mean? Get into salsa, get into reggaeton, get into Brazilian folk, get into samba. You know what I mean? Get into Brazilian trap. That's huge down here. I love Brazilian trap. But Trini, you know, really? but they, oh, what? Dude, the rap music down here, chefing, uh, dude, I got a whole playlist. I got is it, it's uh, Pussy the Hoodoo, one of them? Yes. Okay, I've heard it, yeah. Oh, God, what's his name? I'm looking, uh, MC Cabalino. Pretty mm -hmm. sure. Hell, MC Cabalino, I was at his concert. Hey, get into that stuff because then it's like you could be on the beach as a gringo speaking the English and you got your speaker out and you blasted some local music that the girls like. They looking at you like, yo, who is this guy? You know what I'm saying? And, and then it comes across like you actually enjoy the culture and you're not trying to objectify the women. That's number one. Number two is don't take shortcuts. Right. Um. And what I mean by that is thinking that if I'm having trouble, I didn't say, I'm not going to say dating, but if I'm having trouble attracting women in the United States, right? Because we know the dating culture is fucked up. But as, an, as a man, if you are attractive or women find you attractive or you still look like an attractive option, they'll at least give you choosing signals. Even if you follow through with it, get a number, things don't go the way you want them to go. Uh, her mindset ain't what you want it to be. You're still going to be able to attract women if you do the work on yourself, which is, yo, I work out. 
Um, I have real hobbies. I don't just sit around the house playing video games all day and jacking off. I have, um, you know, a depth of conversation that we can speak about. I'm knowledgeable on uh, world politics, on different things like that. Um, you know, be a renaissance man. Women love that shit everywhere around the globe. And, and, and most importantly, learn the fucking language. I am so sick of seeing y'all niggas at tables trying to date with a goddamn phone in your hand doing all of this texting, bro. Think about this. If you had a woman that came from Africa, she came from Asia, she came from any country in the world to the United States and you take her on a date and she don't know no fucking English and all night she just texting, she texting, you're going to be like, yo, this shit. I'd be like, let's smash, and then like I'll just call you back when I want to smash, and we'll we'll learn. Whenever you learn English, we'll go on a real date. Right, right. Or even the fact that sometimes when you want to have a deeper conversation about something and convey feelings or convey, you know, your perspective on something, knowing the language is actually going to help you get that across in an effective manner. Because sometimes translators, no, no pun intended, on a translator, things could get lost in translation. Especially because people, for example, the way that I'm speaking here is probably the same way I speak in a corporate board meeting at this current moment anyway. And what I'm saying is like the proper English, the proper dictation, the proper, um, you know, uh, grammar, those types of not using slang. Uh, people do that. They, they try to speak the way they would speak to another American and type it in a translator and things get lost in translation because they don't have the same slate. They don't have the same phrases. So those are the things, man. Don't take shortcuts. You know what I'm saying? Don't objectify the women and learn the language. And if you can do those things, you'll, you'll have success for sure. Wow, that was good. That was a really good answer to that last question. So what do you think about the men that expect the women to learn English? Don't. Are you going to pay for their English classes? Like, just don't. Do learn the language. <laughs> yeah. It, it, plus, you're in that country. So you're not only speaking to her. Even if she knows English, what, you're going to have your wife just say everything for you? You know, now you you can't even take on a true masculine. You can't even give her the true masculine experience because... When you go to the restaurant, she got to she got to get to, okay. We want a table for this many. She got to do all the talking. So and you're, you're, you you standing behind her while she's in front organizing everything, looking like the bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like I yeah, yeah. So Will the Thrill says, uh, does Rico do consultations? I do, I do, uh, especially about brothers who want to um, work abroad, but maybe it's not allowed by their job, and they need to. Um, they need to hide their location using VPNs and things of this nature. I've been doing this successfully for a while. I left the States officially December 23rd of 2021. I will never forget that day. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and I've been successfully hiding my location ever since. So um, my Instagram is there. I probably should have came prepared with uh, my Calendly and, and all of that good stuff. But if you do want a consultation, just like regarding living in Colombia or Brazil or uh, doing the, the VPN thing to hide your location, just send me a DM on Instagram and I'll definitely respond. Because I, I got a lot of game for you, brothers, man. It's not even just about like the dating. I know that's been the focus of this conversation, but in terms of, for example, somebody asked a question about real estate and I could tell you mm -hmm. prices of land. I could tell you the average price of like what you should expect to pay for a condo. I could tell you whether you're getting gringo taxed on whatever your transaction is or not. Uh, what areas to stay in? Like if you're serious about making money, what are good areas to invest in? Things of that nature. I got all of that knowledge. I've been gone out of the States for a while. So, you know, I'm really about this life. Get at me on Instagram and I'll get you right. So his Instagram is Tyshawn Jones. It's right there at the bottom of the screen underneath his uh, his name, Rico, right there. If you guys want to get on. Do you have uh, 20 minutes left or no? Yeah, man, I got time. Okay, if you guys want to call in and ask some questions live, I've been dropping the stream yard chat. Nobody's calling. You guys, you guys know you guys need to call in so I can uh, chop these call-ins up into different videos you guys so uh you guys can get some concentrated information for people that don't want to watch an hour and a half stream you guys can get some short 8 to 12 15 minute videos so if you guys got a call if you guys want to call in and ask Rico a question drop 
in on the link right there. Just put. If you guys are enjoying the show, send a super chat for your questions as well. If you are not fully dressed and you can't call in or you're in a situation where you can't call in at all, send a super chat. We'll ask the guests a question today. But I'm going to give you guys five more minutes. And uh, other than that, we will have to let the guests go. So is it cold out there in Rio right now? Uh, nah, it's not cold, but it is wintertime. So it is the coldest time of the year. Like, honestly, it's, it's getting like maybe 65 degrees at night um, at the worst. And during the day, you're still getting 70 degree weather. So it's, it's beautiful weather. It reminds me of Medellin at this time of year. Yeah. Yeah. Over here in Sao Paulo, it's been raining every day for the past five days and, uh, at nighttime, you would need a jacket, uh, maybe, but during the day, you could you could still walk around in shorts. So it's kind of at that hot during the day, cold at night. Uh, nobody's gonna call in. Is anybody gonna call in? Otherwise, we we'll let our guest go. Cause, but he did give a lot of information, so maybe he already answered your questions. Official Kobe said Rico has a baddie. Congrats! Thank you for the super chat. Hmm. Appreciate that, brother. So what are your future plans uh, living in Brazil? Um, honestly, man, I want to get a real estate portfolio here. That is my biggest um, my biggest goal. I also have some other goals to open up some businesses here um, in, the, in the restaurant space. Um, not going to give away the idea because I feel like it's gold. But, um, you know, being able to build the networks that I've built I've been able to make connections with people who actually have money to invest, uh, things of that nature. But a lot of it, I'm just going to do on my own. Uh, like I said, because property is so cheap here, um, it's really easy to acquire. The only problem is you really got to have cash because they're not going to finance you as an American. So it's going to be mm -hmm. a cash transaction. But uh, the amount of money that you can get in return, just like on Airbnb and the short term rental market is phenomenal. So for me, that's a big part of my retirement plan is acquiring a lot of these properties and, and cash flow. Them. 